It's uh, today's like the third day of triple digit temperatures here. This is the first time. It's like our first summer heat wave, and uh, so we we kind of took a break from that and went hiking this weekend on the coast uh, just to you know get out of the heat. So um, I don't like that intro at all. B G Q plus. This video is technically a couple of days late, but in my defense, it's day three of a four day weekend for me. So, uh, you know, from my perspective, it's uh, it's still the weekend. And uh, we're talking about a game this week that I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about, uh, Kaze no Notam. And, uh, you know, we'll get into the game in a second. But uh, just the first thing I want to do right off the bat, actually, the first thing I want to do right off the bat is... Uh, for those that didn't see, normally I wouldn't do something like this, but you know, last week's video, I, I uploaded it and YouTube chewed on it for like 12 hours at least and still wasn't making it available in high definition. So I had to, to delete it and re-upload it. And, you know, I think that did something to it in like the YouTube algorithm cause it didn't get as many views. And I mean, that's fine. If people saw it and just like, I don't want to watch that. Uh, no problem. But if you didn't know that I uploaded a video last week because YouTube didn't tell you, uh, last week we looked at uh, Day Go on the PlayStation, which is an awesome, awesome game. I was really happy with how that video turned out. So uh, just if you didn't know it was there, you should go check out uh, Weekend Rental Episode. I'm not sure what, maybe eight. Uh, we're doing PlayStation again this week. Uh, you know, summer is officially here, and I just get real nostalgic for the PlayStation uh, during the summer. I, I got my PlayStation at the beginning of summer, 1997. Uh, a, a lot of my uh, most memorable times, like really like uh, digging into PlayStation games was during the summer, uh, like the Final, Fan Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, although I ended up not liking that one. Uh, I, the first time I played Final Fantasy II, was uh on the on the PlayStation I forgot was that anthology or collection it wasn't origins I don't think I can't keep them straight I never had a, a Super Nintendo I think I'm on the record for that so that was my first opportunity to play that game that was in the summer so uh all that is to say we're probably going to play a, a disproportionate amount of PlayStation uh you know for the weekend rental episodes over the course of the summer not exclusively but uh, and I know uh, if you did watch the episode last week, I said we were going to do Rambo three. We're still going to do Rambo three. Just, just I know I'm, I'm kicking it down the road again, but uh, I don't know. I just I played this game and I, I just decided I I got it. This has to cut to the front of the line uh, of weekend rentals. And I'll tell you right now, I might do a video next week that's not going to be Rambo three either because something else uh, has kind of come to my attention that I want to check out. Um, I don't know, just to, just to share this. Cause I was excited about it. Uh, I got my PlayStation. I had the Sio mod that's P S I O mod in my PlayStation as uh, an optical drive emulator. That one plugged into the parallel port on the, on the back of the system, uh, still required an internal modification, which, which I don't do that, but, uh, I was using that. I finally got an X station and put that into a different PlayStation that I have, although it's still a, a 1001 PlayStation, so like the original, you know, near launch uh, model. Uh, and I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you this like it matters, but you know, just now, now I have an X station that's pretty cool. So uh, I've got I've got the the memory card all loaded up with a lot of goodies, uh, including the game we're playing today. Now, uh, before we talk about the game uh, itself, uh, I just kind of want to give credit where credit is due. You know, this is kind of, you know, for Americans, this would be, or Europeans, really, this would be considered sort of an obscure PlayStation game just because it didn't come out here. And, you know, I'm not smart enough that I'm like pulling obscure Japanese PlayStation games out of my butt. So, uh, again, just to kind of give credit, uh, just but also to talk about this, uh, I learned about this game watching a video by Tim Rogers, which... Uh, I will freely admit I did not know who Tim Rogers was uh, just because I, you know, I'm just out of the loop on like everything. Like I don't really watch a lot of gaming content on YouTube. 
I don't really listen to podcasts outside of like Retro Game Squad. And, you know, I don't read gaming websites. You know, I'm just, I'm out of touch. I kind of just stay in my lane and I'm doing my own thing. Tim Rogers is kind of a big deal. Tim Rogers kind of came into the public gaming, gaming public consciousness doing uh, videos for Kotaku, which, you know, I say what you want about Kotaku. Some people don't like Kotaku. I don't read it really because I don't read anything like that. So I don't, some people don't like it. Whatever your opinion of Kotaku is, uh, Tim Rogers videos on their YouTube channel were uh, very good. Like I've gone back and watched a lot of them. Um, you know, the guy just found his calling as far as uh, what he's doing with with writing and uh, and video making. Anyway, um, it was Corey who who got me watching this guy. He, he kept bothering. Oh, you got to watch you know this Tim Rogers guy. You know, and he always doing a podcast with Frank Cifaldi. Insert coin. I'm like, I, you know, I've never heard of it again. Uh, that's a reflection on me, not them. They're both very famous and, you know, I'm whatever. Um, but, you know, Corey was telling me like, oh, he's making this. He made this series of videos back when he was doing Kotaku stuff where uh, he was retranslating Final Fantasy seven. So like each video would be, you know, a couple scenes out of Final Fantasy seven that he uh, retranslated because he I mean, he's American, but. He speaks fluent Japanese. He lived in Japan for like 10 years. So he speaks like very fluent Japanese. And so he kind of retranslated the game because, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII is kind of famous for, uh, I don't want to say it's poor translation. It's it's rushed translation. It was translated in like two weeks. So, uh, you know, a better job could have been done if the translator had more time. Anyway, uh, I started watching those, but like Corey was really trying to get me to watch uh, I guess, you know, Tim left Kotaku and has his own YouTube channel called Action Button. Should have said that earlier. Uh, go search that on YouTube, Action Button. And, um, you know, Corey's thing was like, oh, this guy, he makes like six hour long videos. Like he's only reviewing one game, but it's like a six hour long video. And I was like, well, I got to go check that out. And um, yes, the videos are like very, very long but they're not meant to be watched like at once. I mean, they're in chapters and they're meant to be watched more as like a series, like in the same way that you'd go onto a streaming service and, you know, binge watch the first season of whatever, you know, that's kind of how his videos are. Like you can sit there and binge watch the entire video, but they're not really put together in such a way that they're meant to be watched that way. Like you watch a chapter and then, you know, the next day you can watch the next chapter. Anyway, I, I don't want to go too go on too long about his his channel. I could make a whole video just talking about uh, this guy's stuff. I just I, that's how much I like it. But uh, he his latest video, which came out like eight months ago, uh, he did this you know like six and a half hour long video review of uh, a Japanese game called Boku no Natsu Yasumi, and I had never heard of the game, never played it, never even heard of it. Uh, but I, I started watching it and just got sucked in and, you know, I ended up watching the whole thing. I've, I've probably in total watched the whole thing again, maybe two more times, not maybe not in order, but skipping around. And, uh, I say this with, uh, all sincerity, uh, uh not a, a hint of, uh, exaggeration. It's, it's the best thing I've ever seen on, on YouTube, his Boku no Natsu Yasumi video, uh, it, it has just influenced me uh, and had had a real impact on me in a number of ways. And I mean, I can't, you know, I can't say enough good things about it. You know, Tim doesn't watch my show, I'm sure. But uh, if he did, I would, you know, I'd want him to know that. Like, that's how good I think that video is. And that video is is how I learned about uh, Kaze no Notam, which, uh, you know, towards the end of the video, he starts kind of talking more broadly about just all the creativity surrounding the original PlayStation. And he was just like naming off games or talking about them very briefly uh, as examples of, you know, the the magnitude of the creativity on the PlayStation. And so he talked about uh, Kaze no Notam. And, you know, I saw it because he was showing footage while he was talking about it. And I was like, oh, I got to I got to check that out. It's a hot air balloon game. So. Uh, so I did. And that's how we got to uh, to where we are now. Uh, before we get into the game, which we're going to in a second, uh, just a couple things I wanted to mention real quick. 
Uh, one is the name, because uh, I was trying to figure out what the name means, because I, I wish I had the box. I don't have the game to hold up and show you, but, uh, you know, the game, you know, it says on the front, it says Kaze no no Tom in, uh, in, well, kanji, hiragana, and katakana. Uh, and, but then under that in English, it says no Tom of wind, but like, that's not helpful. I don't, I don't know what that is. Like, what is, is no Tom? I had assumed it was a Japanese word. Like, what is no Tom? You know, and I'm like, I'm like typing that into Google translate. And of course it's coming up with nothing because no Tom is not a Japanese word. No. And I'm probably not even saying no Tom. That sounds weird. No Tom. It's an acronym uh, in like the aviation industry. I don't know if they say not or no Tom or no Tom uh, in, in the way Japanese say it, you say no Tom. So that's what saying Kaze no not or something sounds weird, but um it stands for notice to airmen. No, Tom. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I read the definition on like the FAA's website and it says something about like, you know, a, a broadcast of, of information to flight personnel that is, you know, sort of made last minute so that it can't be broadcast through like other means or whatever. That's not, does that really clear it up for you? It didn't really clear it up for me, but from what else I read, it's like, Maybe uh, a pilot sitting in his airplane waiting for permission to take off. Maybe that permission is is given to him in the in the form of a, a no Tom. I don't really know. But uh, what does that have to do with with a hot air balloon game? I still don't knowing what I just told you. What is no Tom of wind? I don't know. But uh, Art Dink, who is the developer of the game, obviously they know because uh, they named the game. And so here's what they said. Uh, they said that no Tom of Wind uh, is meant to mean, meant to mean, meant to be taken as the wind gives us permission for our flight, which I think makes pretty good sense because, uh, you know, a hot air balloon, uh, I don't know how much you guys know about hot air balloons. I know more about hot air balloons than uh, probably most people for uh, reasons that I'm not going to get into here, but... Um, uh, uh, I'm actually writing, I'm writing a text review, kind of a long text review of this game for my website. And, uh, I'm also including a translation guide for the game, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. And I'm going to try to release that as at the same time as this video. So you can learn all about why I know about hot air balloons and, uh, lots of other things that have nothing to do with this game before I finally talk about the game, uh, in that review. But, uh, if you want to check out the game, which I highly, highly recommend, that you do, um, you can muddle through it without knowing what the text, like there's nobody in the game talking to you in Japanese. It's just, there's some text and, you know, you could muddle your way through it, but, uh, you know, I, I, I typed out a, a text file guide that will make it uh, very, very easy. And, uh, you should use that to play the game. But, uh, anyway, uh, if you don't know a lot about hot air ballooning, uh, then let me tell you, you cannot steer a hot air balloon. You can go up and down. Those are the two things that you can control, the upping and the downing. And uh, where you traverse is dictated by the wind. And so that's why the game has its name. The wind gives us permission for our flight because you're counting on the wind to carry you uh, somewhere. And the only thing that you can do if you're a hot air balloon pilot is you can adjust your altitude to try to pick up wind currents going in different directions. And that's what you have to do uh, in this game. Uh, the other thing uh, before we talk about the game itself is I just wanted to talk about the cover art uh, because this game has very distinctive, uh, distinctive among the PlayStation library uh, at least, and especially distinctive, I think, if you're a, a, not a Japanese person, uh, cover art. So uh, I don't have the game to hold up and show you, so I'll just overlay it on the screen. But uh, the cover art for Kaze no Notam was painted by a guy named Hiroshi Nagai. And uh, in Japan, Nagai is a very well-known uh, artist. And uh, I'm telling you all this stuff for a reason. I'm not just trying to say, hey, look at how smart I am. Uh, I'm, I'm not smart. I just know how to read about stuff. So... Um, uh, Hiroshi Nagai was a, was an established artist 
And then in like the late 70s, he got contacted by a musician called Eiichi Otaki to work on a book together, uh, just like an art book. And uh, out of that project of them working together, uh, uh, Nagai ended up painting the the album artwork for an Eiichi Otaki album called A Long Vacation. And I, that I do have here to show you. Uh, I mean, this is a, a very famous uh, Japanese rock album, uh, sort of a seminal 80s. Uh, I don't know if you, someone would consider this city pop or not. You you tell me I'm not knowledgeable enough about city pop to listen to this and go, oh, that's that's city pop. But but it's a really good album. And uh, and again, it's a very famous album in Japan. And so when Hiroshi Nagai uh, did the album artwork for a long vacation, he got like all these other artists contacting him saying, Hey, we want you to do uh, the cover art for our album too. And uh, these were a lot of city pop uh, artists. And uh, in fact, just cause also this is bigger and I can show you this more easily. Uh, so this is a, a compilation album. So I'm trying to not have there be, is it better over here? No um, glare. Uh, this is a compilation album called uh, Pacific breeze. And uh, this was put out by a company called Light in the Attic Records. But uh, anyway, this is a compilation album of a bunch of city pop songs. And uh, this cover artwork, that's also uh, Hiroshi Nagai. So, uh, you know, you can see that, you know, he has a very definite style. And uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, just to, I guess, bring it back, uh, you know, 360 degrees or whatever, um, this company, this Light in the Attic Records, just this year, re-released, I don't know if it's the first, I mean, I think it's been released before, so I'll say re-released, uh, the soundtrack for Kaze no Notam on vinyl. And I don't, I didn't get that, but I have it coming on CD. But, um, I don't know, I bought this, as this was kind of a, a impulse buy at, uh, at the record store. Because Hiroshi Nagai's uh, artwork is, is well known in Japan, you know, anybody that walked into a, a game store in Japan when this game came out would see the box art. And even if they didn't know Hiroshi Nagai by name, they would make the association, I think, between that game and sort of the, the city pop genre and the nostalgia that goes along with it. So, and I'm not saying that's why Art Dink did it. Uh, I think, you know, Art Art Dink in... in my impression of Art Dink is that they're they're like an art house. I think I used that word in the text review. They're like an art house developer, like the same way that there are movie studios that just make the kind of movies that only get shown in like little independent theaters, even if they have like, you know, uh, A-list actors in them. Uh, you know, they're just more about like the the artistic aspect of filmmaking. I think that Art Dink... I mean, it tells you in the name, right? With the art, uh, you know, they're, they were more into like the whole, you know, video games as art, uh, angle. I don't even want to call it an angle. That's bad. But, uh, you know, like other games that art Dink made were, uh, like a train, which, uh, that that's like their most famous game for me because, you know, I, I grew up playing computer games, you know, a train was, um, it was a Maxis published game but you know maxis did like sim city and so when i saw a train i never even questioned it i just assumed oh it's a train it's a it's you know it's sim city like enough that it makes sense that you know maxis made that too and no they didn't uh a train is a is a very popular series in japan and what we got here as a train was actually a train three so oh and then there was a train for the playstation that's a train four Although that game uh, actually has the A Train 4 logo, like the the box just says A Train or whatever the subtitle might be, but the American box art doesn't give you any indication that uh, that it's A Train 4. But if you load the game up, there's this A. I mean, it's it's Roman numerals. It's A I V because it's A4, like this little spinning logo because uh, they didn't take it out of the game. So anyway means nothing uh they also did like aquanauts holiday uh tale of the sun 
Um, oh, what was the other one? I put it in the text review. But I mean, go if you go look on Wikipedia, they have a huge list of games, uh, some of which they just contributed to. Um, and then I can't remember what's it. It's Asha, uh, the Monster World 4 remake that came out fairly recently for the Switch. They, of course, didn't make Monster World 4. That was Westone. But they did the remake of it for the Switch. It's Asha's, Asha's something in in Monster World. Anyway, um, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. So I, I might cut this out and put it in the beginning, and it's just going to be real awkward because it was kind of important information, in my opinion. Uh, or I might leave it at the end. Uh, we're going to find out uh, together. So uh, just the last thing I'm going to say before we get started. Uh, just again, I know Tim Rogers doesn't watch my show. But if he did, uh, just, you know, I could go on just about the things I learned out of that uh, Boku no Natsuyasumi video that I didn't know about or things that I got into because I watched that. Uh, I bought a long vacation on CD because I learned about it in that video. And I also bought uh, No Fuse by Naniwa Express uh, because of that video. And this was literally the only copy on CD I could find uh, anywhere for sale on the Internet. Uh, on an English speaking website. So uh, I don't know. There you go. So anyway, um, now we're going to play uh, some Kaze no no Tom. This is a great, I'm going to say this first and you're getting mad, but we're going to play the game in a second. I promise. Um, this is an awesome, like, like chill out game. And, but I'm going to say it for a specific re I mean, obviously it's got just the ambiance and you're just floating around in a hot air balloon. But, um, and I should have mentioned this. So this is like the thumbnail for the video has the cover art, the thumbnail for this video has the cover art for the game. And then next to it, I've got written, uh, did you luxuriate in the wind, which somebody might look at that and be like, what? But, uh, that's not, I didn't write that. That's like the tagline, if you will, for this game. So it's, it's written down like the front of the spine of the game. Did you luxuriate in the wind? And uh, if you beat the game, you get uh, like the end screen is like your balloon, like floating off into the sunset and the text on the screen in English just says, uh, did you luxuriate in the wind? And I mean, I guess that's like a cool sounding line, but I think it also like speaks to the philosophy of this game, which is that uh you know, you're beholden to the wind currents, right? And uh, especially when you're going through, um, you know, there's like nine levels in this game that you can advance through. Like you beat the first level, you go to the second level, et cetera, et cetera, to the ninth uh, level. And, you know, there's like defined, uh, there's a defined task for each level. Go do this or go do that, as I'll show you. And you can, you can be playing the game, you know, to the best of, not just the best of your ability, but... You can be playing the game correctly and still not be able to beat the level on that try because the wind just wasn't going your way. And you, you just it's out of your control like that. That iteration, if you will, of the level was not completable because, you know, the wind, the wind isn't completely random. I've noticed uh, because at the beginning of the level, the wind is always blowing uh, at all altitudes at the, at the in the direction you want it to go, but there's a randomness to the way the wind changes direction. I think it's sort of a weighted randomness. Uh, like the more, the more the wind changes direction, the less likely it is. If that makes sense, like the, whatever the algorithm is that, it, that resets the wind, you know, periodically every 15, 10, 15 seconds, you know, there's a random number generator involved. And, um, so my point is that, you know, you, you should just be luxuriating in the wind, like just enjoy that you're floating around flying in a hot air balloon. And if you're able to complete the round, uh, you know, on that attempt, great. And if not, you just have to keep trying again, but there's no point in getting frustrated because you just have to accept the fact that that's how the game is. So, um, which I thought was interesting. I mean, it, it's almost like a life lesson in my opinion is, is that, you know, in, you can do everything correctly and still not get the desired and expected outcome. And that's just life. And so like, 
you can either enjoy the ride and accept the fact that like, you know, that's, that's how the ball bounces or, or you're going to go through life a really unhappy person. And I think that's, that's the lesson of, of cause no, no Tom. And I think it's pretty cool. So, um, that's it. I don't have anything else to say except, uh, we're using an original PlayStation controller, uh, because this game does not, uh, make use of, uh, uh, analog sticks and so i you know i'm kind of weird if uh if a game doesn't like require analog sticks uh i just prefer to skip it uh for some reason and um you know when i got my playstation so i'm the game has to load it takes a couple minutes not literally it takes 10 seconds there you go here comes the art dink logo um what was i saying if a game doesn't require analog sticks i kind of like using this one uh when i got my playstation this is what it came with, not this exact controller, but you know the same style, and uh, and yeah, okay. So here's the title screen of the game, and that's that's the cover art painting. It you know in uh, in a you know three twenty by two forty form, and oh yeah, here this is. I don't know if you want to watch this. This is kind of a cool uh, intro video. Cool thing about this intro video. So in this game, you can customize your balloon, which already I think is pretty dang cool. Um, but if you have a customized balloon that you're using, that's the balloon that it uses the next time in the, in the intro video. So like, that's, that's my balloon that I designed. And so that's kind of a cool little touch. And this is just like a, a very artsy intro. I think it's, it's really cool. You know, sort of like this, mo this mosaic, like, uh, background art, which maybe is just low res. Uh, by necessity, but I think it artistically looks cool. All right. Anyway, once again, there's the background art, uh, or the, rather the title screen art, which is uh, Hiroshi Nagai, and uh, we'll get the game started. And um, so this is your main menu, and uh, it tells you to select a mode. So T is try task. We're just going to skip uh, try. T I'll show it to you just so you see what it is, but we're not going to do try task because we're just going to dig right into uh, uh, the rounds. But uh, if I go to try task, this kind of gives you an idea of um, how the game works. The heck is that? Um, so uh, first you see it asks you to load a pattern. Th there's no difference as far as the performance goes with these balloons. It's just you can pick a pattern and you can um, you can customize any of these patterns. Uh, and like I said, I have a custom balloon on here, but I'd have to load my game. But I kind of want to start a brand new game, so I'm not going to. So you can go in here and uh, you have to put in your initials. Uh, my initials, of course, on my birth certificate are CGQ. Not really, but they should be. Uh, the next thing you do here is uh, you pick your location. So uh, the, the three um, venues that the game takes place in, Drafty Valley, Windy City, and Breezy Earth. And uh, I'll just pick Windy City, doesn't matter. And then these are the three tasks. And, um, you know, again, as somebody who, who, you know, uh, knows a little bit about hot air ballooning, uh, I'm very familiar with both the fly in and the wolf hunt, uh, fly in, there's going to be a target somewhere on the ground. You have to fly your balloon close enough to that target that you can throw a bean bag like out of the balloon basket and get it as close to the target as you can. So like normally at like a hot air balloon festival, there would be like a competition where, you know, whichever balloon pilots want to participate would would all take off and all try to fly as close to that target as they can. And like whoever throws their beanbag closest wins. The other one is uh, Wolf Hunt, which uh, again, in my experience, Wolf Hunt has always been that there is one balloon that that takes off and is like the prey and all the other balloons are the wolves that chase the prey. And I think, again, I think you throw a beanbag at the balloon. You're not going to hurt the balloon throwing a beanbag at it. In this game, it works a little bit different. You're just the one wolf, and there's a lot of prey balloons for uh, for you to chase. But I think that's just done for the sake of it being a game. Try Delta. This one, I'm not I'm not sure this one's real or if this one's for the game. Uh, you're, you have to throw three beanbags in three different locations to try to make the, the biggest like in terms of area, the biggest triangle possible. So that's the three, um, 
uh, the three game modes. And if I go ahead and and uh, progress here, you can pick morning, sunset, or night, and then you can change the weather. Uh, oh, there was snow. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. And then down here, you can play uh, or you can you can select different background music. But I always just leave it on random because I mean this whole game has a really really good soundtrack. Like I mentioned, I've got the soundtrack coming on CD. That's how good I think it is. Uh, it's kind of a, it, one of the things the game is known for. So um, anyway, if I if I click through from here, then we're going to start a task, and I don't want to do that because what we're going to do instead is just go down here to round, and uh, we'll just stay with this balloon. So this is like what I was talking about uh, uh, earlier you progress through these nine rounds and right now, like you cannot select any other round. You have to finish round one to unlock round two and, and so on and so on round one, two, and three are all green. Cause that's like the easy, uh, the easy set. And then four, five, and six are blue. Cause that's intermediate seven, eight, and nine are like the, the hard ones. And I guess you see the, the numbers get darker as they go along. I don't know if they're trying to say that they're getting darker. Not really. It's just that each, each round uh, in each set, like one of them is a fly in, one of them is the is the triangle deal, and one of them is a, a wolf hunt. So we're just going to do round one. Uh, now we don't get to select anything. Oh, the other thing you can select and try task is it'll show you the the map of the area, and you can decide where you want to put uh, uh, the balloon, like as a starting point. Um, so what this is saying is that, uh, sort of the game has already placed two markers on the ground and that's the two orange points on the curve. And you have to throw a third marker somewhere so that you create a triangle that's at least 30 square kilometers. So, uh, basically you want to get as far as you can towards one of those two, uh, corners. So, so yeah. And then I'll talk about, uh, how the game controls. Uh, it's pretty simple. Again, like I said, there's not, you don't have a whole lot of control uh, with the balloon here. So uh, I've got it paused. So you see on the right there, there's five green arrows. And those are the wind currents at the five different altitude ranges that you can go to. You start off, we're at the lowest altitude range. So that's why that arrow at the bottom is a little bit brighter. And you can kind of see next to the arrow there, that I mean, the the mountains there with the forest are making it kind of hard, but uh, your little balloon icon is next to that bottom arrow. And as you move up, the little balloon icon moves up. And so because you know the wind currents at the different levels, you know which way you want to go. And so you can raise or lower yourself in altitude to get to a, a favorable wind current. But um, what the game doesn't tell you is the wind speed. And that varies. So you might Maybe you want to get up to the top level to get to a favorable wind current, but between you and the top level is a wind current going the opposite way that's going like really fast, and then that's going to suck. And um, the sort of the two action buttons, triangle is uh, for your burner, and so uh, you'll see when I hit it, you, know, you hit a burner and that you know sends a huge flame up into the, the balloon's envelope and uh, heats up the air more, so then you rise. And if you hit X, which is like the bottom button, then uh, that opens the maneuvering vent, which is a little vent on the side of the envelope that bleeds out some of the hot air, and so then you can lower uh, the balloon. Uh, if you hit the square button, it opens up the map, and circle doesn't do anything in this view, but uh, we can start flying here. And so you use the D-pad, uh, you can kind of move the camera around and uh, here I'll so now I'm raising up the balloon there and uh, we can look at the map see and the map shows us that we are headed towards the southwest corner so if that just kept going that would be great but it, it's not going to keep going uh, the wind's going to change uh, direction and so now see I'm going to hit the x there a little bit to slow our ascent because uh, oh yeah see there you go now we're going the wrong way so now I'm going to burn up some more to get up to that top level. Ooh, and it's going fast. That's very good for us. And then that uh, orange, kind of yellow orange bar at the bottom, that's your fuel. And when you run out of fuel, you're, you're out of fuel. And uh, you're just going to slowly descend. And, uh, you know, if you didn't complete your objective, then you have to start over again. So 
you can kind of monitor the progress on uh, on the map. We have to basically get to like the end of those islands in the lower left and throw our marker from there uh, in order for it to be uh, far enough to make a 30 square kilometer uh, triangle. And uh, when we're ready to throw, we're going to hit uh, the uh, R1 button, which is the only uh, trigger button that does anything, uh, at least during normal gameplay. And that switches into like a, a first person pilot's view. And uh, that's when you can throw the beanbag. All right. So now the wind is changing direction. See, so so now we're headed due west and we don't want that. We uh, want to try to go. I mean, at this point, even due south would be OK, but at least this way we can turn 45 degrees. And you saw that that the wind was really going fast going that way. But I mean, again, you can see like this is just a really chill game. So uh, you just got to chill out and uh, you may get to a point where you're kind of running out of fuel and you're not exactly where you want to be. And at that point, all you can really do is just chuck the beanbag as far as you can in uh, the right direction and hope that it was enough. And if it's not enough, then you just it, the game lets you try again. Like you never get a game over. All, all it says is like, oh, you task failed. Do you want to try again? And of course you want to try again. So, oh, that's good. That's moving us the way we want to go. So where is that? Oh, yeah. I think we should keep going, though. Like, the, I've beaten the whole game. Uh, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying I've seen the whole game. Um, and I remember I got pretty far out and through the beanbag, and I thought it was like more than enough. And it was like 30.5. Like, I barely made it. All right, so now the wind changed, so now we want to drop down one altitude level to there. And, um, you know, this this game doesn't have a lot. There's not a lot of sound effects or noise. I mean, the 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 music sort of takes center stage. Um, you know, you can, it makes a little noise when you hit the burner, makes a little noise when you open the maneuvering vent, makes a little noise if you get caught in a real strong wind. But uh, it's mostly just music. Ooh, that's not the way we want to go at all. So ideally, we want to turn right. So we are going to drop down. I mean, we're probably already far enough. Oop. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep the mix turned up a little bit more this time since it's just music. Oh, yeah. Now, we, oh, important point. Uh, you see in the map that sort of at the outer edge, it's a little grayed out. Uh, you get in trouble if you get into that grayed out zone. So we don't want that. And we've gone far enough. So I'm going to chuck this thing. And there you go. Task clear. Oh, 36 square kilometers. That is more than enough. And you see it shows you there the, uh, the triangle that you drew. So that's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so we're ready to move on then. And uh, this game, you know, sort of, you know, it's a Japanese game, so it follows sort of the Jap the, the more common in Japan uh, uh, control scheme where circle is OK and uh, the X button is like cancel, which uh, that was the way Final Fantasy seven was just because they didn't really do much to localize it. But, uh, you know, most American games, uh, X is the OK and usually triangle is um, cancel triangle or circle. But, you know, apparently that's why the X button is the X button. It's just like X for for cancel. Um, OK, so this one is a fly in. And uh, I mean, and that's why I'm saying you don't need to really be able to read the text. I think it's just kind of helpful. Like I said, these are all I've got all these translated in the translation guide uh, that I typed up. But this one's basically saying we have to fly towards that target and we have to throw our beanbag marker within 10 meters of the center. And if you don't get pretty close to the marker, it's very hard to accurately throw the marker. So uh, hopefully the wind is going to be going in our direction. Oh, it's raining. I'm not really sure. I didn't detect when I was playing this game, you know, when I beat it, uh, I didn't really detect where the weather had much of an impact on, um, on how the game felt. So I don't know if it's just an ambient thing. 
So you see we're already headed in the right direction. Like I said, the game usually, maybe always, starts you off in the right direction before sort of the randomness of, uh, of the wind kicks in. So just here, you have to increase your altitude a little bit to, uh, to get up over these buildings. And then now the wind has changed direction. So now we're kind of going the wrong way. But if I go up to the next altitude, we're going to be going 45 degrees the wrong way the other way. So uh, this is kind of, well, well, there you go. I just did it anyway. Um, and this is kind of what I'm talking about with this game is like, you know, you have no way of knowing, uh, you know, what the right thing to do is because you're beholden to the randomness of the wind. So all you can really do is just accept the fact that, you know, uh, we're headed in basically the right direction. I mean, right now we're headed in exactly the right direction again, but you know, the winds could change in such a way that we're not going to be able to make it over to the target. And, uh, and that's okay. Cause we should just be enjoying, uh, enjoy the music, uh, enjoy, you know, floating in a hot air balloon, uh, you know, and enjoy the view. You can see, obviously, there's pretty bad drawing. I mean, it's the PlayStation, so that's sort of a, a defining feature of the PlayStation is drawing. Especially, I mean, this is this game is a little bit on the, I guess I would say, the earlier side. Uh, I mean, the PlayStation had a pretty good, like, 10-year run, and this is a 97 game. So, you know, maybe if this game had come out a few years later, I, you know, the drawing wouldn't be as bad. And, um, it's really, I mean, it's too bad. There was not a sequel to this game. That would have been cool. It's also really too bad that this game didn't come out here. I mean, I don't, you know, I can't say it would have been successful, but we certainly got a lot of oddball Japanese games coming out here, which was great. And, uh, you know, as somebody with an interest in hot air ballooning, uh, you know, I definitely would have bought this game. All right. Now we got a pretty strong wind going our way. So I'm going to switch cause we don't want to like overshoot the zone and uh, not be able to drop our deal. Oh, there it is. So we're not that close. Oh, I waited too long. Throw it. That's not even close. And then we're just going to get, uh, oh, I forgot. We get more chances. I think we have three bean bags. But now we have to try to make a U-turn and that is not going to be easy. So let's see here. We're going that way. If I go all the way up, that's better at least. But see now, you see how close we are to the edge of the screen? That's kind of a problem because we don't want to run off the edge. Because uh, you just, you get, when you go into the gray area, uh, the camera kind of zooms out. I guess it's just sort of a visual warning without it being something like an alarm, which would definitely go against the atmosphere of this game. But if you actually make it all the way to the end of the gray area so that you're at the actual end of the men of, uh, of the map, um, you just get game over it. So we need to go. What is that? That's like, uh, 135 degrees left. So that would be, so if we drop all the way down, but see, then you have to worry about what's underneath you. Like we have a, a mountain right underneath us. I think you can't see it because the screen's kind of cut off. Do I should I fix that? I should fix that. Um, sorry, I know this is like breaking the fourth wall, but I just want to make sure you guys can see everything. So can zoom out a little bit. This is like seeing how the sausage is made. All right, I think that's, ah, sorry, give me a second. All right, right there, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, anyway, because you couldn't see that, uh, oh yeah, see, now we're getting blown backwards, now we're going to get blown, see, so now this pyramid's going to be in our way. All right, so now we're kind of mostly headed in the right direction. 
And now you see that uh, our gas has turned uh, or orange, like dark orange. Um, hmm. All right. I don't want to be there. No, we don't want to crash into the Sphinx there either. Ah, there we go. All right. Now we'll get another shot. That one's not good either. That one. Yeah, those were all bad. I kind of freak. It's like you only get one shot or you feel like, oh, I got to get one chance because I'm flying by and you kind of end up freaking out a little bit. So, all right. So we're going to hit yes. And we're going to try again. I mean, I got to say that the game clearly gave me the opportunity uh, for success there. And, uh, you know, I just I botched it. Um, also, I mean, like a real hot air balloon, uh, there's like a definite delay. I mean, it's not like driving a car. Ooh. Um, you know, when you hit the burner you got to kind of wait a minute for uh, like the balloon to go up. See, the balloon is still rising, even though I quit burning because uh, you can end up wasting a lot of fuel that way. All right. So we need to turn. Well, we got to get past these buildings. I need to, I need to go lower, but I can't do it here. We're just going to crash. Oh, actually now we're going the right way. Yeah. I've been drinking a lot of, uh, this is barley tea, which that's another thing. I didn't even know barley tea was a thing until I watched that. Uh, cause that's like, that's how I am. I watched that, you know, when he's talking about drinking, uh, ice cold barley tea and I'm like, what? I never heard of barley tea. I looked it up and I was like, that sounds pretty good. And so I, you know, I made some and it's good. All right. We still got a ways to go anymore see so now we're just trying to cruise so you know you just you just give the burner you know little short bursts just to sort of maintain altitude You know, you don't want to waste too much gas because, you know, if we miss again and we have to try to make a U-turn, you know, you want to try to make sure you've got enough gas in reserve. Oh, that second one felt pretty good. Oh, there we go. That was a nice one. All right. Three meters, 57 centimeters. It's not bad. Uh, task clear. Okay, so now we move on to round three, which is going to be a wolf hunt round. Even the loading screens look nice. All right. Oh, you know what? I don't actually remember what this says. So hold on a second. Let me bring up. Uh, the guide that I made. Where'd I put it? Oh, there it is. All right, we are on round. Okay, round three. So this is, so basically, I, you know, I took all this text. I just took a picture of it and popped it into Google Translate. But then I just sort of reworded it so that it would, you know, because it gives you a very literal, literal translation. And I kind of reworded it so that it sounded more natural. Like, you know, if this had gotten localized, what the translators would have would have put. So, uh, okay. So our instructions are to find any. See, it calls the prey the wolf balloons, and I don't think that's right. I think we're the wolf balloon, but that's neither here nor there. Find any wolf balloon and hit it with a marker within the one minute time limit. You have unlimited markers, so uh, we can basically machine gun markers at people, but we only have one minute. And you'll see, there's going to be a clock up at the corner of the screen. 
So, I mean, you kind of have to figure out which the way is the wind going? Who are we chasing? Uh, there's a guy sort of, you know, to uh, in front of us a little bit to the left. So we're just going to try and uh, chase that person. But we've just got the one minute to uh, catch him. But, I mean, you know, look at this view. It's it's sunset. We've got some sort of castle situation uh, over here. There's trees on the ground. Uh, that balloon in front of us is getting away. But uh, there is somebody just right behind us if uh, we can catch some wind going the other way. No, go that way, please. Where are you? Oh, there they are. See, it's the chicken balloon. I think they're hiding behind that wall, but we're running out of time, pal. Oh, nope. There they are. Boom. Got him with eight seconds to spare. Cause like I said, see, I didn't read that the first time. Uh, I didn't notice the part where it said you had unlimited markers. And so I was trying to be careful and just throw one um, later. I mean, we're not going to get that far, but I think the ninth and final round is uh, you have to chase down one of the prey balloons and you have to hit them 50 times. And I, I don't, I don't think there's a time limit, but you're limited on gas, man. So like you can't, you can't go forever, but 50 times. But what's funny is it only took me like two tries or two or three tries to beat that level, which I was shocked by. Uh, the hardest level of this game for me is round seven. Uh, I, I think I probably replayed that level like 20 times. And I beat this level. I beat the game basically in one sitting. Uh, just, uh, it was on Friday night and, um, that was hard, uh, but it was enjoyable. It's like, okay, well, you know, the wind wasn't blowing my way that time. Uh, just try again. Okay. So just since I have the translation guide, uh, open round four, drop three markers on the ground. So as to create a triangle with an area of 25 square kilometers or more. So now there are no markers on the ground. We have to throw all three. So, uh, what I found to be the easiest thing to do is to drop one of the markers just immediately. Like, I mean, what are you waiting for? So we're going to go the opposite way that we are flying and then uh, basically just hurl this friggin' thing as far as we can. And that's marker number one. So it disappeared into the cloud somewhere. And then you can look at the map to see where it landed. It's, you know, looks like it landed in a park there, actually. And uh, then, yeah, so we're already heading this way, but uh, we can try to see if um, any of the wind currents are especially strong. This one seems pretty strong. But of course, we're in the middle of downtown, so uh, we can't stay at this altitude or we're going to crash into buildings. Um, you don't get like, you know, if you actually crashed a balloon into a building, that would be bad. But in this game, you don't get punished that much. Uh, it depends on how hard you hit something. Uh, you get sort of penalized by losing some of your gas which uh, in level seven definitely comes into play. Uh, I really did not like round seven, uh, you know, relatively speaking. It was still fun. Uh, the fact that it took me 20 tries, I mean, honestly, when I finally beat that round, it was just that much more satisfying uh, when I did it. And I certainly never got so frustrated that, you know, I had to like drop the controller and walk away or anything. Because um, again, you are luxuriating in the wind. Uh, which way are we headed here? So uh, that's not bad. If we can throw one way over in this corner, uh, maybe that will work for us. But we want to kind of get as far into that corner as possible and then hope that we can get out. Um, you don't, you know, it seems because, you know, it, when you get into the first person view and kind of like look up at a 45 degree angle and just like, hurl that marker like you feel like you're hurling it like halfway across the map and you are absolutely not so uh you know, basically you're not hurling it that much farther than you know your your visible area so you want to kind of wait until the last minute before throwing anything so um that being said we don't want to go too much farther because uh we don't want to sort of get into the danger zone uh so to speak 
uh, at the end of the map, but that is definitely not the way we want to go either. So uh, I'm going to drop a lot in altitude. Nope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're still kind of headed in a bad direction, but um, we're just going to see. Nope, that was not the way I wanted to go. Ideally, from from this direction, we want to go like 45 degrees left. But as you can see, that's not an option right now. So all you can kind of do is wait it out and uh, and hope that something goes your way. You see how close we are to that green or gray area, rather. So uh, that that's really not good, but any of the wind directions aren't going to make it any better unless we go all the way to the top, and then we're going to just be going the opposite direction. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And uh, it's a very fast current. So let's see how far we can get doing this. Oh, there's the airport, by the way. You'd think that would be a no-fly zone. You'd think that uh, we'd be getting sent a no-tom telling us to scram. Ooh, that's not the way we want to go. How far did that take us? That's That's not nearly far enough. Oh, but now, if we can hurry up and get all the way, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, take us out of the no-no zone. All right, yeah, there we go. So uh, now we're safe. Oh, I guess this is the snow. I'm guessing this is snow. It looks like snow. Uh, so now we're screaming along pretty good. But we're not really going the way we want to go. See, now I'd like to go 45 degrees to the right. But, you know, let's just kind of go this way for a while and uh, and see how the winds change. Because if you get far enough, then we could just go 90 degrees to the right. Well, there we go. So you see now where so we are at the highest altitude we can go, but the mountains are higher. So at some point, uh, we're gonna hit the mountains, and we might be far enough along that I can just like uh, chuck the marker. And if we're gonna start crashing, then like that's what I'm gonna do anyway. So uh, let's just throw this thing and uh, see where we end up. Let's see, task failed. And then uh, the only thing, I mean, I, I have very few criticisms about this game. One of them is I wish it would tell you what the area of the triangle you made was just to give you a, an idea of a gauge of like, okay, that, that wasn't nearly big enough, uh, you know, and then, you know, so you know for next time. But, you know, at the same time, one could argue that, you know, the map is kind of giving you an idea of how big the triangle needs to be. So, you know, that's the danger of doing what I'm doing here and just throwing this marker is, you know, we're not that far from the center of the map, but at the same time, like we don't have unlimited gas either. So, uh, you know, I can't wait too terribly long before I throw the first marker or, or we're going to be in trouble as far as gas goes. All right, we're going pretty fast. Oh, now we're going this way? All right. And, I mean, I don't really have a plan as far as, like, how long we're going to play the game for. I mean, this video is now, what, like 50, 55 minutes long or something like that. So I'm not going to go too much longer. But uh, I also, I hate to, I don't want to end a video not being able to complete the level you're on, at least. So uh, we'll see what happens. All right, now we're going due south. It's not really ideal because we want to get into the corners. So we we want to go, if I drop down two levels, that would be better, like there. Well, now we're going over the mountains, so yeah, we're better off down here because it's faster. But at some point, we're going to have to go up to clear these mountains over here. Huh? Hmm. 
and go this way. Which way are we going now? Oh, that's pretty good. I can't wait too much longer uh, to throw it. And we need to start thinking about going the other way. I don't know what happens. Can you... Th I seem to remember throwing this off the screen one time or off the map, and it kind of made the game bug out. But uh, that's not happening here, so... So now we, we need to turn around at some point. But all of these directions are going the wrong way. So we're just going to have to wait for the winds to change. Oh, and I did want to show you guys the, um, the, the balloon customizer just because I think it's cool. All right, so I'm going to go all the way up to the top because maybe we could try to get all the way up into that upper right-hand corner. I don't know if that's getting greedy. Oh, this is going to carry us into the no-no zone. Yeah. Going the right way? Okay, good. This will get us back out of there. There we go. That was scary. But see, you want to be careful with how long you're you're burning for. Because uh, you don't want to waste gas. Um, but we do want to get all the way up to the top. But just try doing it in a couple of long burns. See, that's already enough to get us up there. Ooh, that's carrying us pretty fast. That's good. Because that's the exact direction we want to... Oh, no, it's not. Damn it. But the middle one would be. Mm. Back up to the top. There we go. I mean, it's cool that it's snowing, but it would be cooler if, like, the ground had, like, some snow on it. Getting in trouble again. There we go. See, as long as is it flat? Yeah, it's flat for a while. So you're better off staying at the bottom because then now we're not using any gas. Ooh, wind picked up. That's good. How are we doing? Yeah, I mean, we got to go way farther. Mm. 
All right, we want to turn... Well, ideally, we want to turn 90 degrees to the right. So rather than wasting a ton of gas and trying to get up to that high altitude level, let's, I'm going to wait for the next wind change. See what happens. Because you see we're still using a little bit of gas even though we're just cruising. I don't think I even have enough gas to get all the way up there. That's it. We're officially out of gas. All right. So if we throw it due east, isn't this is definitely not going to make a big enough uh, uh, triangle? But we don't want to just give up either. Yeah. Task failed. So uh, so I'm going to hit no because I. We can maybe try play, you know, again, but um, I wanted to make sure that um, I showed the uh, uh, customization mode. I, just, I think it's cool. Uh, there's the memory card. It does everything you expect it to do. So if you go into options here, it's it's mostly in English. So record just shows you the records for, for different stuff. So, I mean, yay. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Uh, key config changes the buttons. Obviously, sound is mono or stereo. But uh, if you go into customize here, um, you can pick a balloon. And uh, now this is like the edit screen. So this is like the only thing in the options menu that is uh, in Japanese. And um, the circle button, like I said, is it's the OK button. So, uh, you know, that that just does the painting. So like if we wanted to make this column stripe black. We just use the circle button and it's triangles, which might seem weird at the, at the beginning, but it actually makes good sense. Um, so you can, so you can rotate L1 and R1 are rotate left and rotate right. And then R2 uh, is the tilt. So you see, we can like color these in. Oh, I don't want that. So if you find one you don't want, uh, uh, the X button is like the color matching tool. So we want white. So if I hit that, or if I highlight that and hit X, you see now in the upper right where it's white again. So that way we can get rid of that thing that we don't want. And then we go up here to turn it black again, and then uh, we can keep going. Uh, but it's it's also got like uh, what do you call that? Like an eyedropper tool in uh, in Photoshop? Uh, or no, that's what the that's what the color picker tool is. That's what this is. Uh, you can also make your own color by hitting the triangle button and then you just it uses it like the RGB sliders and then it's showing you on the right what color you're making. So like if we wanted red, we would just zero out the G and the B and then uh, we could go, uh, if we wanted to fill in the, the other stuff, red. Uh, oh, I, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Um, you have to hit, you have to do that and then hit the circle to accept. All right, there we go. So anyway, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make a meal out of it. I just wanted to kind of, I just think it's a cool feature. You know, it's like they didn't, they a hundred percent did not have to put that in there, but uh, they did. And that's pretty neat. And then uh, you exit out by hitting start, but I don't think it gives you the option to not save it. Like if you don't like what you did, you'd have to undo it. So uh, I don't like that. So we're just going to say that it's bad or I didn't even <laughs> spell bad, right? Uh, there we go. Bad. But I mean, that wasn't the balloon we were using anyway, so who cares? So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, do I need to keep going? I mean, I, I just, I really want you guys to see the game because like, I'm telling you that like, in my opinion, this is a game you should be playing. Uh, to that end, I, I went ahead and, uh, yeah, we're not going to play anymore. Um, uh, you know, I went ahead and typed up a translation guide. Uh, to make it easier. Now you have no reason not to play it. Um, you know, you know, you can, obviously you're probably not going to have the game. If you have a, a, a PlayStation with a X station or a Sio, you can do that. Uh, Mr. Of course, uh, does PlayStation games, 
But I mean, just you know, EPS. What is it? EPSXE, the the you know PC based PlayStation emulator works pretty good. So you can also just do that. Uh, you know, I actually have somewhere around here. I don't even know where it is, uh, unless I got rid of it. Uh, a chipped PlayStation for you know burning your own CDs. I might not have that anymore. I don't remember. But um, uh, anyway, that is Kaze no no Tom. Uh, also, just once again, you should definitely go watch Tim Rogers Boku no Natsu Yasumi video. Um, I can try to put a link down in the description if I remember. Uh, if I get the text review done in time, I'll put a link to that because that will have a link to the translation guide, but I'm not going to let that hold up the show. So if I can't get the text review done by tomorrow, um, I'll just put a direct link where you can download the text file. So either way, uh, when this video is up, the translation guide will, uh, will be available to you so that you can check this game out. So, uh, just, you know, awesome, awesome game in, in my opinion. And I, like I said, I, I wish, I wish this had come out here. I guess the other thing, just cause we never got, cause again, it's not until like level seven. Um, just my, my main criticism of the game is that it has mountains that are higher than your balloon can go. And I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that's real world, but you know, because the wind has the randomness to it, you can get your balloon just stuck where it's just getting constantly blown against the mountains because it gets blown against the mountains and that makes it kind of bounce up a little bit and it can just keep getting blown and blown against uh, the mountains and you keep losing fuel and you can't drop an altitude to try to get out, get out of it because every time you hit the mountains, you get bounced back up and it's very frustrating. It's just like all you can do is um, restart the level, which I didn't show that if you hit select, the little thing comes up that you can restart the level. So you don't have to wait until you're out of fuel. But I mean, that's, that was the only level round seven where that was even an issue for me. So it's a pretty minor criticism. I mean, I just think this is such, it's such a cool game. Uh, you know, just the artfulness. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of YouTube's hottest new show, Weekend Rental, saying that with heavy irony for those of you that don't pick up on that, because someone is going to say, uh, you know, who does this guy think he is? It's hot, YouTube's hottest new show. Yeah, I'm joking. It's uh, self-deprecating humor. Uh, anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this time. Uh, have a good week, and uh, we'll see you again next time.